Welcome back everybody, my name is EK. Today I have a nice cup of black coffee, no vanilla coffee today. I slept for so long today, it's ridiculous, so I desperately need some caffeine in my body. Uh, today the goal of this video is going to be to try and get to roughly level 50 and unlock world tier 3, which is when we're getting kind of into like that early end game stuff. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna get shit done and I'm gonna cut back in when something interesting happens. See you soon guys. All right, there we go, level 40. 10 more levels to go. And that's another level down, level 41. All right, here we go. Chapter 3 has now been completed. We did enough. Uh, we probably will still be clearing a lot of this stuff because, you know, the Cathedral of Light is a standard thing to unlock World Tier 3, so we're going to be doing that one anyway. Uh, one Stronghold is very easy to do. Uh, upgrading the potion is something that I should be doing, but I'm running into issues with uh, a certain lack of Gallovine. I don't recall having this issue at all initially on my story playthrough, but I guess I was taking things slower, like exploring maps a bit more, and also maybe I was getting them from caches doing the story or something. Anyway, uh, we now get the Chapter 3 rewards here as well, which is uh, a couple more aspects. We get some great favor. We get strips and points, a mount armor, so that's kind of cool. And we get third journey cash contains legendary salvage, packed armor, and potent blood. So let me claim my rewards. Open up the cash. And uh, yeah. It says something about legendary as well, but there isn't legendary stuff in here. Uh, there is a, a proven guard in here. It doesn't really look better than my current armor. Uh, there's also pants in here, but then I'm going to be losing my um, my newly acquired legendary aspect. I'm going to read it out to you guys here. Uh, upon taking damage from surrounding enemies, you drop a smoke grenade and dodge the next three attacks within 10 seconds. This effect can only occur once every 45 seconds. So this means that whenever I'm dodging, I'm dropping a smoke grenade. Whenever I get hit, I'm dropping a smoke grenade. Now, I don't know if these smoke grenades are good, but I kind of like this aesthetic of just constantly throwing smoke grenades down uh, whenever something happens like oh no i'm in trouble smoke grenade is always the answer so that that's kind of a cool system i guess i have a like, look at this look at this bow 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 where's my swords at man where's my swords where's my daggers no all i'm getting is just bows and you know it's kind of starting to very, very slowly piss me off a little bit because it's just a little bit annoying anyway because we have now completed that as well we can now continue the battle of fear and faith. So let's see what the story has to offer next. I've removed the bitten flesh. But we can do with faith. <laughs> I liked how my dialogue window was also traveling along with the NPC. That was interesting. All right. So we were just told by Eris that we are now powerful enough to go and deal with Zir, the vampire lord. So yeah, I'm going to see what it looks like. I'm kind of curious if this is going to be the end of the story. And if, you know, it, it's it's not it's not a super short story. And I don't, don't know what I was expecting really going in here. Because on the one hand, I was expecting a like a, a very small story. Wait, am I supposed to go in here? Yeah, the ore hoist. Okay, great. So I was expecting like a pretty small story, considering it is like a seasonal thing. You know, this isn't going to be in the game forever, I think. I'm going to assume this is going to be removed. Unless there is some way you can still keep on playing this even after it's been removed. I actually think they put in a decent amount of work here because the story is voiced. Uh, the story is at least a couple hours long. You know, there is, of course, the whole stuff where you, you know, have to go and do seasonal stuff in between. So it's not really that lengthy when you take that into account because that's taking up, uh, you know, the, the the big blunt of gameplay. But, you know, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised so far. And if this is there for every season, then I can see myself returning seasonally, just, you know, playing through the new story, playing with the new systems, and then quitting again, which is not really what I want to do, but I guess this kind of game kind of lends itself to that. So, uh, yeah, we'll clear this dungeon, and we'll see if Zir is a bit of a challenge. Also, I like how Zir is hiding in the same place where we also were chasing Lilith in Act 1 of the base games campaign. Because I remember, like, at the end of this area, you run into, like, this lake that we couldn't cross, and then you had to return to it later when you, you know, kind of uncovered how to cross it. And, yeah, I think that's where the lake is, actually. Like, all right over here is the lake. And this is where we killed that, that person's mom, I think. Which sounds very grim out of context, but hey, it is what it is. But we have to move down there, I guess. All right, see you guys there. 
All right, we go into the City of the Ancients. Now, I think this place was closed off when we were here initially. So it's kind of cool to return to the general place we were before. But now going into a different area. Now we're in the Court of Night. So does this mean Zir has been hiding here even during the base game? And I'm wondering because I don't really know the Diablo 4 lore that well. So I don't know, like, was this place always there? Is Zir a... You know, a known character in the lore. Are vampires, you know, known entities in the Diablo lore? Are they just kind of slapped onto the game here as like a, you know, a, a, a gimmick almost for the season? Or is this a thing that, you know, people who have been playing Diablo are like, oh, cool, you know, it's finally time for the vampires or they're returning from a previous game or something like that. Because, you know, as a Guild Wars 2 player, if a, a faction that, you know, I've heard so much about in the lore and, you know, I'm quite a lore enthusiast in that regard. If, if a, a faction makes a return or if a if a faction that has been talked about in the lore for quite a bit actually comes into the game, I always find that super interesting. And I'm wondering if there's a similar thing going on here or if this is just kind of, hey, these guys are cool. You know, we need something dark. You know what? Blood vampires sounds good to me. All right, so we were here before. I remember being ported here and then we we kind of... We kind of just left immediately because that, that was danger or something. And now I guess we move here manually. I like madness. Madness sounds like interesting fights to me. Ooh, and we get like a little change of aesthetic here as well in the course of dawn. Foolish child. I gave you your power. You were mine the moment you crossed my threshold. I kind of like the voice acting. He sounds pretty cool. Wait, is that like a blood orb thing that hitting me? Wait, that thing's chasing me, I think. But I can't damage it, so I actually have to keep running away from it, I think. That's a very interesting mechanic. So is that Lord Zeer commanding, like, you know, this, this orb of blood to try and, you know, prevent me from getting to him and completely, you know, just slitting his throat because I have these very sharp daggers? Interesting. The pain will end. But I'm here to bring the pain. Unless that's what he means. You know, he's scared I'm going to bring the pain to him. And he's like, please, please don't go and hunt me. I'm just a feeble vampire lord. And you are a dagger wielding person. So you're obviously much stronger. Oh, wait, a double boss fight. Cool. All right, let's slaughter them. So Ebok of the Ancients and Tidao of the Ancients. I might just leave the entire fight in here because I feel like we, you know, we haven't seen that much of the story. And this looks like a very cool fight. So here we go. Let's keep pumping away. Oh, There's going to be big damage. Look at this HP bar just melting. When you got the energy thing stacked, like it's just, it feels so, so good. Okay. Got to care for the orb a little bit, but I have quite a decent amount of health regen going on now as well. Wait, am I being dazed? Don't worry. Infinite energy coming in in a second. We're just gonna kind of facing everything and go big dick here. Let's go. Let's keep the damage. But let's keep pumping. Look at the pumping. The pumping is real. And I didn't lose HP because the pumping is too strong. I out pumped him. All right, is Zir here? Zir, good sir, good sir. I'm here. Cloisters of dusk. All right. Well, let's see if I can find him. Look at my HP bar, guys. My HP bar just goes up so quickly, like. I get hit, but it just keeps regening instantly. Like, the Vampiric, like, regen powers feel really, really good. Like, extremely good. I'm really enjoying it. Oh, a triple fight now. Do I think they can take me down? I'm just regening through everything. It doesn't matter what they throw at me. I am immortal. I am the number one pumper. I mean, throwing a potion in there just for good measure. I am immortal. The blood of Lilith is carrying me. Carry me, Lilith. And here we go. The pumping is about to start. Here we go. Big damage. Ah, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful big damage. Oh, this looks like we're about to walk up to Zero and actually properly fight him. All right. Uh, I don't have an elixir active, so might as well just grab an elixir. I have third eye dodge, and I have armor thorns. That looks quite nice. Let me get that. 
the sanguine throne. Hello. Ooh. Lord Zir, it's you and me. We finally meet. Is he gonna like reappear as like this monstrosity or something? Ah, yes, he is reappearing as a monstrosity. Look at him. Look at him, bro. Look at him go. All right, Lord Seer, you think you can tumble with the best? Well, you will have to try better than this. Actually, I'm ready for him to just like one tap me at some point. Here we go, stacking up these things. Big damage coming in right now. I mean, he's like okay ish tanky. There's like random blood seeks as well. I'll probably just leave in the entire fight here. I mean, might as well keep the final fight of the uh, like the new story in there, right? That's very important. Let's let's keep pumping away at this blood seeker. He's down. Okay, good. I want to get behind him. Oh, oh, kind of like double tapped it there. That wasn't what I wanted to do. No, he's he's leaving just as I have stacked my thing. Are these blood puddles gonna hurt me? Yeah, a uh, bit of a dot, and also they slow me, which is. A little bit annoying. So far, seems pretty good. I'll just pause, just in case. Don't want to get like randomly burst by something. He's already halfway down. Not too bad. Is he like pushing me away or something? All right, now the blood seeker in the middle. Oh, don't do that. I was just about to dash into your Bloodseeker and kill him. Doesn't seem too bad. But we are vulnerable. Might as well put a potion. Oh, don't want to be in the shit. Get out of the shit, sir. Sir, move to a shit-free zone. I can't deal with your shit. Escape artist. I didn't even know it was on there. Cool. Alright. Uh, we go back on him. Wait, he's, he's leaving again. Sir! Sir, I just popped my ulti. Come back. Whoa. That's more damage than I anticipated, but it's fine. We tanked through everything because we are a big boy. Right, we gotta, gotta make sure we care for the shit. Oh boy, oh boy. Get out of the shit, sir. Like, I literally don't have time for your shit. Alright, good thing I swapped to him, so I can now just stack my thing on him. Hello, Zier. I'm coming. I mean, he looks pretty cool. He's got decent mechanics, but, you know, not too challenging. And again, I am on world tier 1, so obviously, you know, nothing really here is going to be too challenging. But it's, not, it's a relatively engaging boss fight. Um, I'm just going to stand here. And, no, this is really greedy. I can't be that greedy, right? He's actually doing decent damage to me. I like that. Now we finish him. It's over. It's over. Uh, a helm, a ring. Level 42 as well. Nice. Only eight more levels to go. So we'll hit the nice level 50 mark. And we're like, you know, out of the tutorial of the game. A serpent cornered. Uh, return to Ares as well. We have a lot of stuff in our inventory here. I will look through that. And I'll tell you guys if there's anything cool in there. Uh, we grabbed the boots as well. Might as well. Is there anything cool in here we can do? Nothing. Okay, I'm going to return to Aris, and uh, yeah, I'll show you guys if anything cool has dropped into my inventory. This ring looks quite nice, the Starlight Ring, because it says, gain 22 of your primary resource for every 25% of your health that you heal. And because I'm constantly healing due to the vampiric powers, I think this will constantly be upping my energy, which means that in turn, I can spam my Twisting Blades a lot more. And that's the entire purpose of the build, so far at least. So I think I do want to grab that. All right, that means the main story for the season quest is now done. So my next objective is going to be a lot of grinding. I'm just going to do a whole mix of like Legion events, maybe some dungeons, maybe some uh, vampire farming. Just like just play a lot of content right now. I'll probably be skipping a lot of the content for this video. So next time you'll see me, I'll be leveling up repeatedly, most likely. My goal is still to get to around level 50 today, just so I can push the, the, the final dungeon as well. And hopefully, you know, we can start the next video in tier three and we can get into the, you know, higher quality items. We can get excited about loot drops again. 
which to be fair, I still kind of am, but I've kind of been skimping on really checking the loot in this video and, and just in general, because like I don't want to take too much time getting the pre-level 50 stuff scanned through too much, just because I know we're going to be replacing them when we do hit level 50, when we do get the next tier of items. But I will probably have to itemize a little bit just to be able to properly beat the final dungeon to get myself into Act 3. So I've cleared my inventory. I'm going to be working on some blood powers. I'm going to be uh, working on some of the objectives here if I can work on any of them. Uh, maybe even from the, the previous tiers just to get a lot of experience done. Get a lot of the, um, the progress here into the, um, uh, the Battle Pass reward track. We do very soon have the uh, level 44 Smoldering Ashes coming up. I'm level 42 right now, so we have that to look forward to. And we also have the level 49 to look forward to. And then I noticed as well, starting from the later level, so starting from level um, 63, you can see we get two of them here. We get uh, another one at uh, 66, then at 70. We get a little bit more, like one at 72, two at 74, uh, 176, 178, uh, 2 at 80, 3 at 82. So there's a lot more coming up. So probably, I haven't done the calculations yet, but I'm assuming you can max some, if not all, of these out, uh, which means that if you have one character that is then at a high level, uh, you know, your future characters will benefit from that greatly, which I think is a really nice way to make you play multiple characters in a season. And apparently it's also possible to spend 100 gold here to reallocate the blessing if I want to. So if I want to you know, play specifically for something else, I can just swap things around and it just costs me a bit of gold. So yeah, I'm going to go off screen grinding here for quite some time and uh, you'll see me leveling up quite a lot. See you soon, guys. All right, level 43 is here. Level 44, there we go. Six more levels to go. All right, here we go. Another point is the Urn of Aggression. That is 5% more experience. And once again, we only need one for the next tier. So I'm assuming all tiers just take a singular point and we can get plus 20 on the experience, which is quite nice. Ah, 45. Five levels to go. And there we go. Level 46 is in the bag. You know, the grind is real. I'm mostly just spamming things to get myself whisper completion and then completing the whisper thing again going back doing the same thing over and over again but we're almost there i think by the time i hit level 48 or so is probably when i'll go and do the capstone dungeon to get myself to tier 3 and see if we can complete that so i'll be back in a bit and that's another level level 47 we're getting closer now ah my first encounter with mr butcher you know, I I have not seen this guy yet, but here we go. It's time I duel him. And I think I'm alright. Just like standing through him and just like face tanking him kinda. Alright, there we go. Oh, we got a dagger too. Is it any good? It is actually much better than what I'm running right now. So Yeah, just a bit of a better stat stick at least. Don't really like the um the aspect on it but hey whatever i don't really need that so that's a nice damage boost so we go from 978 to 1108 that's that's quite a nice boost all right continuing all right that's level 48 so i'm just going to complete one more tree of whispers rotation and then i think i'll look into optimizing my gear with the stuff i have looted and then it is time we try the capstone dungeon and make that also the capstone for my recording session here because I've been going for three hours now. Um, like I'm still doing all right right now, but I definitely feel like I should, uh, you know, I should not push over four hours because I should get a break at some point. I should get myself some food because like, I have been going pretty hard. But then again, you know, it is fun. So, hey. All right, I have now gone and upgraded everything we could upgrade. I just nuked all my resources. I really couldn't care about it too much. I can probably just farm most of it back. Um, we have skulls in everything. So we have, well, everything that we had a slot in. I could have tried putting slots in things, but that is a world boss resource that I don't think I should be spending. That's probably going to come in quite handy later. So we have skulls in here, which are giving us healing received. We have a skull in here, which are giving us life and kill. And we have 
arm here as well. So I'm just trying to make sure we have a lot of sustain, a lot of defensives where, yeah, I might not deal optimal DPS. I could probably slot in stuff that gives me more DPS. But right now, all I care about is just being strong enough where we can deal with whatever is in here. I remember the boss being reasonably strong on my mage, although I do feel like mage was a lot weaker in the 1v1 scenario. Also, there was way less uh, sustain and set, etc. So this does look pretty promising. I think we'll be fine here. I also, of course, had to go up to world tier 2 now, because otherwise you can't do this dungeon. You need to be in world tier 2 to be able to unlock world tier 3, which makes perfect sense. Otherwise, everyone would just do the capstone dungeon in world tier 1. So yeah, we're going to go in here and uh, we're going to smash some things. I like how the door like closed and then reopened. Also, I have not really done my hair. Like usually I have my hair like combed kind of back, but I am committed now to the weekend look where I did take a shower and then just like combed it back a little bit. But you know, obviously there's no like gel in here. So now I have like the, um, the, the, the nice, like a rooster could live in here or something. Well, not a rooster, like a bird. I'm not sure why I said rooster. Anyway, let us smash some mobs in here. Yeah, so the mobs are level 50 in here, which is slightly higher than I am. But I've done higher level dungeons already. So I think we'll be fine. All right, I've gotten the Animus to put into the Animus urn over here, opening up the gate. And that is the first floor kind of completed. Ah, the four-way boss fight. I remember this from the initial playthrough. So, okay, cool, we cleared that. All right, onwards. The teleporter. I can't remember where this takes me. I know there's a big boss fight at the end. I think we're going to like a, yeah, a much darker place. A reliquary of erudition. Ah, level 49. Almost halfway there. Well, I mean, halfway to the level cap in pure levels. Uh, probably about uh, like 4% of the level cap in like grinding time. But hey, we're making progress. All right, to the curator's chamber we go. And I believe this is the final... Wait, this door hasn't opened. So I can just walk straight through. Anyway, this is going to be the final boss of Act 2. Uh, I'll probably leave the entire boss fight here, may maybe. I don't know, depending on how interesting it is, I can't remember. But we're going to take him down. Yeah, he's dying a lot quicker than I remember from my playthrough on my mage. I think like this fight took me like... Uh, probably like 15 minutes. Yeah, this is so much better. Oh my god, okay. Do remember I have to keep an eye on those puddle thingies because I think those damage quite a bit. Also, my mage didn't have this level of mobility. Also, I probably didn't have nine potion slots, but then again, I don't think potions are really gonna matter that much here. Okay, make sure I stay behind them. Well, I'll just potion just in case. Oh, where is he? Where did he go? Oh, wait, he's like doing this like cool AOE thing. Dust the tornado, pump away, get the damage going. I also, I, I gotta make sure I stand still as much as I can because standing still gives me more damage. Also, I get armor stacks. Like, I can just literally stand here, I think, and just I'm not ready yet. pump away at him. <laughs> this is pretty chill. I'm just ready to get one tapped by something. Like, it's gonna happen, right? We got a port out of that. Pop the Shadow Imbuement too. Like, I'm not really having to try hard too much here. Like, this fight seems incredible. Whoa. Never mind. Never mind. Don't underestimate the curator. He might grade my scores. Can I finish him in style too? Hit, hit, hit. Oh, wait, he's dead. Okay. Cool. There we go. Whoa. That's a lot of loot. Go away, you skeleton weirdo. My bags are full. Ah, doesn't matter. Bags are full. Okay. Uh, I'll look into this in just a bit. Uh, but I now have to inspect the world tier statue. So I'm thinking I have to leave here. Yes, I do. Go back to the world tier statue. You know, we gotta we gotta keep this in into the video, right? You know, we're gonna we're gonna go to tier three. <laughs> I'm gonna be finally allowed to take a break. I've been going for three and a half hours straight now. I to be fair, I have to correct myself here, you know, I don't wanna be lying to you. I have stood up to go to the toilet and grab myself a coffee. So, you know, there's definitely been like five to ten minutes of me not playing. So, you know, just, just putting it out there. Anyway, World Tier 3 Nightmare Unlocked. So, the difference here is 
we were playing on Adventurer. You know, enemies are easy to defeat. Just wanted to power through things, and we definitely did do that. Uh, veteran is slightly more difficult. We just did that. 20% more experience, 20% more gold. Enemies are more challenging. Uh, monsters drop more items. I don't think it's really that relevant to play Veteran when you are leveling to 50 as your main goal. I did do Veteran on my initial playthrough on my Mage, which also proved a lot more difficult. But I, I decided this time I'm going to go for Adventure. Anyway, those two are now behind us. We will probably never touch Adventure or Veter uh, Veteran ever again. Uh, I have never gotten the Torment, by the way, so I've never gotten the Ancestral items. Uh, but by getting into Nightmare tier, we now have a level 50 to 70 content. We have Sacred items. We can also drop Unique items. Uh, Nightmare sigils are, are there to upgrade dungeons, so we can actually play harder versions of dungeons. Uh, Hell Tides appear, which are similar to the uh, Vampire Blood Harvest thingies. And champion monsters with damage resistant auras can appear. 100% more experience, 20% more gold, and all my resistances to all elements are reduced by 25%. So there's, there's a lot of stuff changing here, so let me swap to Nightmare. Here we go. And we are now in Nightmare. Now it says, speak with Doomsayer Pira. Now I, I'm i thinking, from what I remember, this is just going to be like a, a normal quest. I don't think this is a storyline quest. I don't think this is to do with... Zeer or the vampires or anything seasonal. I think this is just regular stuff. Um, what I will be doing here though is I will. I'm still. I'm still not certain what I want to do though. I, I'm gonna think between recording sessions here. I can either go and I can go grab a build of the internet and really you know get some good stuff going and kind of see how different it is as opposed to what I'm playing now, or I can continue this way up until about 70, unlock tier four, and then start going for a proper build, which I might do. Uh, I also don't know how long I'm going to be continuing this series. You know, I've kind of played through all the seasonal stuff. So, well, I mean, like, we've discovered all the seasonal stuff. There's a lot of grinding still to do within the seasonal stuff. You know, I still have to go through the entire season journey here. I still have to go through the entire battle pass. You know, we're at 41 right yeah. now. Almost completed 41. You know, there are, like, what, 92 tiers, I think, if I remember correctly. 90 tiers, so there's still a lot of stuff to be done. And I kind of want to do that because obviously I have paid to boost the the track, so I might as well continue playing it. I don't know how long it's going to be playing for. I think this ends in like January or something, so I have some time. Uh, we also do now, I think, have the ability to spend our Smothering Ashes here. Oh, never mind, never mind. I got that 48. I already grabbed that. Uh, we need to be level 53 and we unlock uh, another Smothering Ash. When is the first time we get two of them? I think that's level 63. Yes, so the highest I have gotten so far on my other character was level uh, 456. So there is a lot of stuff to do this time around. You know, if I want to push forward, I, I, I'm kind of tempted to at least try and push for 70. If I can, you know, stay motivated to do that. So far, I'm still really, really enjoying myself. Hoping that stays around. Anyway, I'm going to end the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This one, you know, was a lot of grinding again, lots of cutting out. Uh, but I need to go take a break. So have a nice day, everyone. I'll see you around and have a nice day.